The time is 5.30. David Brinkley is on vacation. I'm Chet Huntley. For an hour and a half today, the normally placid university and capital city of Austin, Texas, was held in the grip of a terror which began in killing and ended in killing. A maddened former Marine, a 24-year-old student in the architectural school named Charles Whitman, first killed his wife and mother in their home. Then he fled to the top of the university tower, a 27-story building, and from there shot to death at least 13 other people and wounded at least 31. The carnage did not end until police ended Whitman's life with several bullets. Here is a report from Neil Speltz of KTBC-TV, Austin. A Marine veteran who was an expert marksman shot and killed 10 unsuspecting noontime strollers on the University of Texas campus today, and then he was cut down an hour and a half later by an Austin policeman. When the shooting ended, 30 others were seriously injured. And then the bodies of the alleged snipers, mother and wife, were found in his apartment, both dead. The tally at this hour is 13 dead, 30 wounded, and that figure includes the death of the man police say did the shooting. A sniper identified as 24-year-old Charles J. Whitman started shooting from the observation deck of the 27-story tall University Tower. He fell moving targets blocks away. A terror-filled 90 minutes started at 5 minutes before 12 Austin time, and it was 1.22 when policeman Ramiro Martinez shot Whitman. Victims were cut down on the west and south sides of the campus as the sniper zeroed in on his targets with unerring accuracy. Those who were felled with bullets from the high-caliber rifle were pulled to safety as soon as possible by officials and passers-by. Others crouched in terror. Heavily armed Austin police, sheriff's deputies, highway patrolmen, and Texas Rangers converged on the campus and began returning the sniper's fire. But he was well entrenched, and he had a fantastic vantage point of the entire area. Reporter Charles Ward was on the scene as the gun battle raged. He described what was happening and then interviewed a Vietnam veteran who risked his life to pull the victims to safety. Hey, hey. Ambulances screaming all over the city and more sound. More shots being fired at the tower and on the tower. On the mall. Maybe the department shells. One of those who is out of breath now after running out onto the mall rescuing those who have been shot is Brian Ellison of Austin, who has been in Vietnam and has been back for two years. Brian, how many have you gone out to rescue? Today, two. What did you have to do? Run hard and keep low. Did you have any trouble getting them up, or uh, did any shots come close to you while you were out there? No shots came close to me. It's just the last one. He was dead. He was dead weight. He was a little hard to pick up, too limp. Not like someone was knocked out. How many have you seen that are dead today? Just one. I hope not anymore. But many of the victims could not be moved until after the sniper was gunned down. And then the university students moved in to see what had happened. One ambulance driver was shot and critically injured trying to haul the wounded to safety. A policeman was killed as he moved in armed to try to get a sight on the sniper. A University of Texas professor was killed as he walked to class. The campus at one time looked like a battlefield. Dead people were lying on the sidewalks under 100 degree temperature with police and others occasionally darting from cover to cover. The sniper was well armed and apparently planned a long siege. After he was cut down, police hauled out of the barricaded observation deck two 30 off 6 rifles with telescopic sights, a 357 Magnum pistol, and a shotgun. He had two large jugs of water and a footlocker containing food and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. What caused the man to take the lives of so many and wound so many others on a hot summer day may be found in a letter discovered by the bodies of the alleged sniper's mother and wife late this afternoon. The typed letter related Whitman's headaches and his plans to kill his mother and wife, and a grim notation on the message read, Mother and wife, now dead, 3 a.m. His wife was a biology teacher at an Austin high school. The letter was typed last night. This is Neil Spells reporting from Austin. Again, Austin police now place the toll at 16 dead, including 14 shot from the campus tower. 
NBC News is planning a program on the murder and his possible motivations tomorrow night.